Oh, whew. well, here we are. Welcome to the, the lab. lab. You know, uh, these clothes are great for jogging, but not really for working in the lab here. If you'll excuse me a second. Ah, there. That's better. Now, what were we on about? Oh, yes, we were describing motion. It's true that everything here on Earth is in constant motion because the Earth itself is in constant motion. It's rotating on its axis, and it's revolving around the sun at the same time. And even when you think you're sitting still, you've never really stopped moving. Well, we can describe the motion of things in many different ways. Uh, for instance, you might describe your own motion walking, jogging, or running. And if you were on a bicycle, you might describe your motion as pedaling. Or say if you're opening a jar, you might describe your motion as twisting. Well, with this ball, I could describe its motion as rolling along the ground, or bouncing, or flying through the air. Uh, these are all different ways to describe motion. Well, scientists like to describe motion in ways that they are able to measure or take measurements. In other words, they like to quantify things, like speed. If you wanted to know how fast something was moving, you would need two different kinds of measures, distance and time. Well, probably one of the most common measures of speed you're familiar with is the measure used when you're riding in a car or maybe on a bicycle. It's called miles or kilometers per hour. Miles or kilometers are the measure of distance. It's a pretty good distance. And the hour is the measure of time. Measures of speed are chosen to make the most sense of whatever they're trying to describe. It probably wouldn't make much sense to choose miles per hour to measure the speed a snail moves. It doesn't mean you couldn't use miles per hour, but maybe a different measure of distance and time like centimeters and minutes would help us to understand better just how quickly it moves. Well, how about the speed at which a tree grows? Miles per hour certainly wouldn't work here either maybe inches or centimeters per month or per year, depending upon the type of tree and how quickly it normally grows. Well, on the opposite end, some things move very quickly, like light. Light moves at a speed of almost 300 million meters per second. That's around 186,000 miles per second. It's like going around the Earth eight times in a single second. If I wanted to measure the speed of this remote control vehicle, I need to think about the kind of distance it usually travels. It can't go too far away from me before it loses the signal from the remote. So I think meters would probably make an appropriate measure of distance. And next, I need to decide what an appropriate measure of time would be. Well, I don't usually use this for hours at a time, and minutes might not give me a meaningful measurement. Seconds, though, would work very well. So to measure the speed of this toy car, meters per second would make an excellent measure. Just remember, the scales of distance and time that you choose for measuring the speed of anything really depend upon what's appropriate for whatever object you're describing. Try to sit as still as you can. Don't move a muscle. Don't even blink. Do you feel yourself still moving? Even a little? That's great. You may have thought you stopped moving, but you never really completely stopped moving as hard as you tried. Mobility is very important to people. We have places to go and people to see. It's possible to measure out your own speed of movement by using measures of distance and time. To calculate your own personal speed, you will need a meter stick to measure distance, a watch or stopwatch to measure time, two cones or markers of some sort, and a calculator. 
Place one of the cones on the ground as a starting point. Use the meter stick to measure out a distance of 50 meters and mark the end with the other cone. First, calculate your speed walking. To do this, have a friend stand at the far cone and time how long it takes you to walk the 50 meter distance. If you're using a stopwatch, just round off to the nearest second. Then use your calculator to divide the distance of 50 meters by the time it took you in seconds. This will be an average speed over the 50 meters including speeding up and slowing down. Record your average speed for walking. Then repeat the test for jogging and running. Use the same method of dividing the 50 meter distance by the time it takes for each test and record the average speed for each. When finished, measure out each of the average distances you recorded. Does it seem like you went about that far in a single second? Try measuring your speed over different distances. Does your speed change if you only go 20 meters? How about if you go 100 meters? Now the next time someone tells you to hurry up, surprise them by telling them your personal range of average speeds for walking, jogging, and running. Maybe then they'll understand just how fast you really are moving. Hello! I hope you have been well. It's me, your computer. Now, my friends, a question for you. Did you know that you can compare and graph your average speed while walking, jogging, running, and even skipping and jumping, if you like, on a computer like me? It is not difficult at all. Do you remember our old pal, the spreadsheet? You can use it to do it all. To begin with, Open up a computer spreadsheet program like this one you see here on the screen. In the first box, box A, 1, put the title you choose for the activity. I'll just call it Average Speed. Remember, you can stretch out the columns from up above if any of your headings don't fit. Your next step is to list the speed activities you will grab. In this case, we will use walking, jogging, and running. Put these below the title and do not skip any rows between the pieces of information. That would not be good. After that, put the scale you will use in box B1. This could be any appropriate measure for speed you decide to use. I am going to use meters per second. Collect and input your data for the different speeds you calculate during your experiment. Be sure to input your data carefully for accurate results. When you are done inputting your data, highlight all the information you input by clicking and dragging over all the boxes that contain information. Be careful not to highlight any boxes on the spreadsheet that do not have information. Again, that would not be good. Find the option in your spreadsheet program that allows you to make a chart or graph. Use this option to make a bar graph of your data. You can use the graph to report your results or even help you design a new experiment. Oh boy, I have really outdone myself this time. I think I will print this one and frame it. It's just a mouse click away from masterpiece. Yes. Speaking of mice, uh, what did one mouse say to the other, eh? He said, I really get a click out of you. <laughs> get it? Like clicking a mouse on a computer? Ah, uh, wait until my motherboard hears.